And I think that, and as every single person has kind of shared, I think that Jenna, there's definitely, and I know from our conversation that you felt this, and I mean, as a bride, you even said, you're feeling this. There's a real iotis on the venue. There is a huge pressure on the venue to, I don't know what the right word for it is, but there, I think pressure is really just the, the blanket statement that, that kind of encompasses it. And, I, and so I, at this point, I really think it's important to hear from you. Um, what has your major experience been? Um, and and what, what are some of the things that you either feel that couples not, don't necessarily have the perspective, like they don't necessarily understand, or things you wanna remind them of from the venue point of view? Yeah, um, I would say probably within this whole industry, um, the venues have probably been receiving the most pushback from clients, absolutely. Um, for a few reasons. I mean, generally the venue tends to be the largest investment for a wedding. Um, that's where you're spending the majority of your money. So um, looking at that, your deposits are likely to be, you know, drastically more than your other vendors. Um, also just looking at um, the venues, kind of the essence of the event as well. You know, like that's kind of, that's on your invitations. That's where people, mm -hmm. that's kind of the first impression with your wedding when people see your invitation is, oh, it, they're having it at this venue. This is what I've heard about this venue. Mm -hmm. All those types of things. Um, so it's been difficult. Um, you know, there a lot of people are understanding. Um, a lot of my clients know that I'm also in the same position as them and I'm really trying my hardest to, you know, provide as much notice as possible and to provide as much flexibility as possible. Um, that being said, my hands are definitely tied when it comes to things. Um, I don't own this venue. I'm not the one that gets the final say um, in, in terms of deposits and postponing. Um, so yeah, I'm really doing my best to communicate with clients. Um, you know, I'm getting emails on the daily, even from September, October, November weddings, just kind of, um, you know, wondering what are their next steps? They know that they're still a while out. They're not really, um, first priority at this moment, but like, what should they be doing in the meantime? Um, I've really been making a point to connect with clients over the phone. I just think it's so much easier to kind of have that person to person connection, um, rather than kind of going back and forth in email where things can kind of get lost in translation. Um, so I've been finding that definitely having the phone calls is really helping me out it's helping the clients out and it's really just um you know making them aware that i am here to help them i know exactly what they're going through um and that you know there are certain protocols um that are in place right now and really we are just waiting on um to hear from the government too like they are really the ones that are deciding um essentially whether your wedding should be postponed or not. Um, so at the moment, the government, um, in terms of private events, has only had a regulation up to um, May 12th um, in terms of any events over five people. Um, so anything up until that point, absolutely we're postponing even further out than that up until about end of June, um, we're absolutely having those conversations. Anything, um, July, I mean, still kind of a gray area, as you can even see with my own wedding, we're still kind of not at that point where we're able to postpone. Um, but like definitely August, September, October, you know, it really is just too soon to say. Um, and, and some people are kind of having a hard time dealing with that, just kind of given the fact that even planning is pretty much not able to move forward at the moment. You know, like if you need to go if your groom needs to shop for his suit, he can't go and do that right now. My fiance is dealing with that right now. Um, now is a time where I should be going to get my dress altered and I can't do that. So there's so many factors that play into it. Um, and these are kind of all the conversations that I'm having with my clients. And they're like, you know, we understand that we're still three or four months out, but like, we can't do this right now and we, and we can't do that. Um, and those are kind of the more difficult conversations because that's kind of something that while we are understanding and, and definitely I'm the most empathetic because I'm going through the exact same thing. It's just something that the venue can't really take responsibility for at the moment. Um, but like I said, a lot of clients have been 
understanding, like they do understand that we are a business. We are also struggling right now as well. Everyone's just trying to get by and do the best that they can. We've never had to experience anything like this before. Um, so majority of the clients are pretty understanding. Of course, you have a few that do provide quite a lot of pushback. Um, and, and we're really just doing the best that we can to kind of handle those, you know, deal with crisis management and kind of leave conversations with at least giving some clarity to clients and just letting them know that um, we are still committed to putting on the most amazing wedding that they've imagined and that we will do everything that we can um, to make it right that's also fair for both parties. 100%. And I mean, on that point, you know, with postponement and all that different stuff, how, how much flexibility really is there? Because even for my own clients and looking at it myself and speaking to different venues within uh, the GTA, you know, there's only so many dates within 2020. And I mean, at first, I know that the rumblings in the community was, let's try to keep everybody in 2020. Let's not try to like lose a year of, um, couples and profit and let's try to sustain this economy as much as we possibly can um so everybody who can stay in 2020 let's try to do that and allow for 2021 to kind of be still its own thing and of course as time has pushed back that's become less possible shall we say what is your understanding or what kind of insight can you give about that about you know 2020 availability and 2021 availability and do you have any type of uh advice that you can give specifically about staying within this year or or if you feel people should really try to stay in this year or if you feel like really it's it's not realistic at this point from a from a venue point of view yeah, so just to give you an idea, um, the venue that I work for, we were fully booked for Fridays and Saturdays, pretty much from June to end of October, um, which is prime wedding season. So um, availability is already extremely limited for 2020. Um, going into this, we kind of, we had a few, um, maybe one or two Saturdays in November, um, definitely some Fridays available in November, um, December as well. But now as we've kind of been postponing the, the April and May weddings, those dates have started to fill up. Um, so for anyone looking to postpone into 2020, definitely you're a lot more limited. Um, chances are you're not going to get a Saturday. Chances are, you know, it's going to be a winter wedding when you have your wedding, if you're wanting to keep it in 2020. Um, so definitely what you're looking at in 2020 is most likely a November or December wedding, um, most likely a Friday or Sunday. Um, yeah, like that's pretty much what you're looking at if you want to keep it in 2020. So what I would say to those clients that, you know, don't want to postpone their whole lives for their wedding, they'd rather just get it over this year, right. be open-minded. Um, the venue is, is not withholding dates from you um, to be mean. This is literally just what the availability is. Um, we can't push someone else out of their wedding day. Um, um, it's just the reality of it. Right. Um, I would also say be open-minded as well to, to the Friday weddings, to the Sunday weddings, to even the weekday weddings. Um, to give you an example, like where I'm looking at with my own wedding, um, yeah. we're probably looking at postponing into 2021, um, just because the end of this year will also be crazy um, with my work as well, given everything that's going on. Um, but, you know, we know that a Saturday in the summer is not going to be possible. Um, not just because of availability. I mean, I am getting married at a very popular Toronto venue um, that likely is pretty much fully booked for Saturdays from May to October. Um, but for the couple Saturdays that they maybe do have left, you know, and this is something that can kind of be controversial, but, um, Saturdays in wedding season are a venue's bread and butter. Those are the dates that are going to be sold regardless. Um, so if we're postponing all of the Saturday weddings from 2020 into Saturdays in 2021, that's taking away a whole wedding season for us, um, which you know is really not putting the business in a great position either. Um, again, like this, these are things that 
people can kind of get pushed back with. But I really do think that in scenarios like that, it's best to be flexible flexible. Right. Um, you know, the venue is willing to provide flexibility with clients, but as a return, unfortunately, clients do need to be flexible as well. Um, so to give you an example with my wedding, right. we were originally supposed to be married on a Friday. Um, July 3rd is a Friday this year. Yeah. Um, so ideally, we would like to postpone to a Friday next summer, just kind of given our venue. You know, it was supposed to be an outdoor ceremony. Um, there is a really beautiful terrace at our venue. We do want to take advantage of that. So ideally, we'd like to keep it in the summer. Okay. We know Saturday's not an option. We know that Friday's probably not an option either. Um, so we are open to, you know, holding this wedding on a Thursday, holding on a Wednesday. Um, obviously not ideal. It's going to be putting some people out. But you know what? Everyone is living through this pandemic. Everyone understands why you had to postpone your wedding and that, you know, you're not going to be getting an ideal Saturday um, or Friday or Sunday day. It's just the reality. Um, I think I would like to say that most wedding guests will be empathetic to that fact um, and will be that much more excited to celebrate your wedding um, and will be that much more cooperative if you do have a Wednesday or Thursday wedding. Um, so yeah, what I would just say is, um, be open-minded. Um, of course, every venue is different. Some venues are providing more flexibility than others. There's kind of a whole range as to what venues are offering. Um, but you know, if if you're not really getting the answers that you're wanting from your venue, um, look for solutions. Look look to find a middle ground. Um, this is really not ideal for both parties. The venue is also suffering as well. So instead of kind of fighting back, try and find a solution that both parties can come out of it and say, yeah, that's really great. I'm happy with the decision that we came up with. Um, what I would also say kind of on top of that as well is don't get so hung up on the specific date. Um, of course, you know, like when you're talking about seasons and like you really visualized a summer wedding as opposed to a winter wedding, um, I really do think that those are things that you shouldn't give up. Chances are um, you booked that specific venue given the current, um, given the season that you booked it for. Um, so I really do think that, you know, venues can kind of work around that. Again, like I said, look at the option of maybe getting married on a Thursday and, and then your venue should probably be able to work with you with that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think what this whole situation has taught us is that the most important thing right now is making sure that you have all of your key loved ones there for your wedding and that it's safe to have your wedding. No one wants this huge cloud um, of this pandemic kind of lingering on their wedding day. And, and like Christina said, um, not being able to hug your grandparents on your wedding day, not being able to hug your guests and your friends. Um, I think that's kind of the biggest concern right now. Um, so when you kind of factor that in with the date, the date doesn't become as important. Yeah. Um, for me, I would much rather get married on a Wednesday or Thursday in the summer and have everyone be safe and have a great time um, than to, let's say, get married on a Saturday this year. Um, so just kind of keeping those things into perspective, um, flexibility is definitely key um, with the venue, um, definitely because of flexibility and also just keeping in mind um, the business as well. Yeah, 